you are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome to On The Beat on Germantown Municipal Television. I'm your host, Rodney Bright, Deputy Chief of the Germantown Police Department. On this show, we will provide you, the viewers, with a behind the scenes look at policing in Germantown and introduce you to some of the men and women who work hard to keep Germantown one of the safest cities in Tennessee. We also hope to provide information related to public safety in a manner useful to our entire community. Keeping our city safe involves many partnerships. We hope to highlight those as well as we discuss current law enforcement topics, department programs, and public safety initiatives. Lastly, we hope to demonstrate for our viewers the professionalism and dedication to service of our department as we introduce the men and women who serve on the beat in Germantown. With a new school year underway, today I'm glad to welcome Lieutenant Brandon Schill, the Police Department School Resource Officer Program Supervisor, and Senior Officer Orlin Mack, the school resource officer assigned to Houston High School. They are here to speak about our school resource officer program and school related safety. Later, we'll chat with Germantown Fire Chief John Selberg about recent achievements and improvements within the fire department. And then we'll talk with Communications Center Captain Don Taylor about what it's like to work inside our 911 dispatch center. But first, I'm glad to welcome Lieutenant Shiel and Officer Mack to the show. Gentlemen, thank you for being here and welcome. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Appreciate you having us. With a, with a new school year underway, Lieutenant Shield, I imagine uh, there's always chaos and anxiety for parents and students uh, as they look forward to the new year starting. Uh, the first word of business will be to find out how's it going so far. Actually, things, are, things have been going very well so far this year. You know, we're lucky enough to have a community uh, with a very low crime rate, and that's reflected here in our schools. So as far as our call volume thus far in the schools, it's actually been you know, very, very light, which we're thankful for. Uh, of course, with the beginning of a new school year, we always have issues when it comes to traffic. And so you know, we've been dealing with those. We've actually put on a special traffic unit that's been solely dedicated to the school zones throughout the city. And that's been very successful. Uh, the number of citizen complaints has been extremely low um, so far. And so you know, we take that as you know, a mark of success that we've done the right thing and kept the traffic moving, you know, not only safely, but efficiently through the city as we get into this new school year. That's good to hear for sure. I know it's always anxious for us as, as well as the school gets underway and we know that uh, traffic and student safety is uh, of paramount importance. So I uh, appreciate your efforts and the efforts of your staff so far this year. Uh, just to educate our citizens a little bit about our school resource officer program, uh, something we started back in the early 90s, I know, and uh, it may be foreign to some people. The number of schools in our city, uh, certainly a safe school environment is important to everyone. And uh, we just wanted you to share a little bit with our viewers about our program structure and, and, and where we are a, a, as a unit. Sure. Um, as you said, the program originally started back in the early 90s. Um, originally Shelby County um, actually administered the program. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, Germantown moved into the middle and high schools with our police officers. Since then, we've expanded it to all schools within the city, which is we have a total of eight schools, um, five Germantown Municipal School District schools and three Shelby County schools. Um, we provide crossing guards and school, uh, school resource officers to both school systems that are here within our city limits. So we're, we're very fortunate to be able to have those officers in place. You know, they provide, um, obviously, a sense of security um, to the parents and to the students. But they also you know, give us the opportunity as a police department to be able to you know, know the goings on you know, in the schools and you know, be able to keep our ear to the ground um, as far as any criminal activity that may be taking place or you know, just to be able to help the students out um, you know, wherever you know, the, the SRO you know, may be able to intervene. I know that seeing a law enforcement officer on campus sometimes is a little bit different and unique, but it's more common today, I guess, than it used to be. Um, I know their officers don't just, they're not there just to do law enforcement duties. Can you speak just a little bit about maybe some of the other roles that they play? 
Sure, we, uh, we follow um, a national model um, here where the SRO actually has basically three different roles. Uh, first and foremost, they're a law enforcement officer. So they do the same things that any other patrol officer would do. Um, safety and security of the students, taking reports, making arrests as necessary. Um, secondly, uh, they're an informal counselor. Sometimes students feel a bit more comfortable um, speaking with a police officer in an informal setting as opposed to you know formally at the police department where they're sat down you know maybe have several adults that they're not used to speaking with you know they generally um, have a rapport and since the officers are here you know day in and day out for you know generally several years at a time and i'm sure officer mack can get into that uh, a little bit later on and then uh, third you know as a teacher and so we actually have programs in place in the elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools where SROs teach um, on a variety of different topics. So for instance, at the elementary school, we have a program where they teach um, 15 to 30 minute blocks to kindergarten through fifth grade on subjects such as gun safety, uh, bicycle safety, proper use of 911, um, internet safety, stranger danger. So things like that that are, you know, age you know and, and topic appropriate for uh, the children you know that they're being taught to uh, like for instance officer mack on high school level i know that he teaches a few different classes um, on insurance um, also on some of the different criminal justice topics and they'll the prof or the the uh, teachers will bring them in kind of an ad hoc you know if they need um, an officer to ad lib or to add something to the lessons that they're they're teaching on a daily basis. Great. Well, speak, speaking of Officer Mack and somebody who uh, is in there day in and day out and serving the students and serving the city in a, in a unique role, uh, welcome to the show. And uh, how long have you been uh, in the school officer program? I've been in the schools for a total of 10 years now. It's a long time. And as Lieutenant Shields mentioned, I know that uh, you and your peers and the other schools wear a lot of different hats, a lot of important hats. What's it like and what's your passion for uh, serving in a school role? Well, my passion is working with students. Uh, and that's the reason why I enjoy my job as a school resource officer. And we do have to have a unique skill set because we deal with a lot of different challenges. Uh, parents and students are different today and um, they come to school with not only academic challenges but uh, social challenges and um, we have to be prepared to deal with all those different things so that goes beyond uh, law enforcement duties and as Lieutenant Shields has already mentioned uh, we act as advisors and former advisors so they come to us and they talk to us about their problems and many of the students do feel more comfortable at times uh, talking to the school resource officers because we try to meet them on their level and, uh, and that makes them feel comfortable and uh, we, we do a lot of things we get involved in, in sports here at the schools uh, I've worked with some of the football players in the, in the weight room and uh, those are just different ways to help us build a rapport with the students and it allows them to opportunity to see us as normal people uh, because there is a misconception uh, um, among a lot of people when they see officers at the schools they think that uh, we're here because the school is dangerous but uh, we want them to know we're being proactive uh, we're here to build a relationship with the youth so they can uh, have better interactions with officers out on the street and in my 10 years uh, as a school resource officer I've seen the benefit I've seen uh, returning students come back and tell me that uh, the relationship that they were able to establish with me helped them deal with officers out on the street uh, because they saw them as humans, people who go home uh, to a family and they understand this is a job that they chose and they're just not agents of the government that are out to get them. Right. Uh, so the, the relationship that we establish here at school actually does uh, benefit students. I think it's very important as you mentioned and you referenced uh interaction with law enforcement in a in a way that's uh, not confrontational and they see us uh, see you guys I know as a role model and uh, I know that we're cultivating good soil and planting seeds for the future and uh, and has a, having a positive impact on the students uh, before they uh, maybe make some bad choices so on that note I want to thank you for serving in your role I know how important it is Lieutenant Shield thank you for overseeing our program with two different school systems I know that's a challenge so thank you both thank you sir Thank you.
It's time to take a short break. When we return, we'll talk with Germantown Fire Chief John Selberg about recent improvements in the delivery of fire services in Germantown. Please stay with us. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. Welcome back to On the Beat. I'm your host, Deputy Chief Rodney Bright. Public safety in Germantown is not only a police effort, but also involves members of the Germantown Fire Department who work hard to provide the best fire and medical services to our community. Here to talk about some recent achievements and improvements is John Selberg, the Germantown Fire Chief. Chief Selberg, thank you for coming on and welcome. Thank you, Rodney. I know there's been some recent uh, uh, acknowledgments and uh, achievements by the fire department in uh, some of the way that you do business and a really big announcement recently. And just <laughs> want to talk a little bit about the, the ISO uh, certification and, and that process and what that means maybe to, uh, to the citizens. Well, um, <clears throat> every few years we get evaluated for insurance purposes from the insurance services office basically rates us on how well we're providing fire protection to the community. Um, that essentially includes looking at your fire suppression capabilities or firefighting, um, your dispatch capabilities, and your water supply capabilities here in the community. So it's not just a, a fire event. Um, we uh, recently had them come in and evaluate us, and we actually went to the best rating you can get. It was a class one ISO rating. Um, only, f only three other cities in Tennessee had that rating. Um, it's considered very, very well done and uh, it'll have some influence on possibly your insurance ratings here in the community. That's outstanding. I understand that that's, that's probably a well-involved process with a lot of work by you and your staff behind the scenes. Could you talk a little bit about what it takes to get to that, to the, where you get did it get the rating that you, uh, you know, so desire? It, it, it is a big process. We actually had um, actually, uh, one of our chief officers that was in charge of coordinating it, but basically everyone on the department was involved in it, um, looking at how we do, even just do our reporting, how we um, make sure that we can, you know, flow enough water for uh, large fires, um, making sure that we, this town has good water supply and good hydrant systems. So it's a pretty elaborate evaluation, and uh, they did a great job. Well, I know that uh, you know all the city departments work together, and I think that's a great example of how all of us are, we do our own thing, but uh, we also work to, to collectively to uh, support and, and to the benefit of, of everyone, so that's important. Yeah, I don't know that the citizens really realize how well that works out here. It's, it's great. I know uh, the, the city, or the fire department, uh, several years back undertook uh, a great uh, task in uh, making the decision to provide emergency, emergency medical services uh, to our citizens and I know that uh, there's been some time distance since that decision was made and there's been a lot of progress and a lot of growth along the way. Could you update our citizens about uh, the ambulance uh, program and, and where it stands? Sure. We uh, started up about four years ago. We'd always provided the what we call first responder. Uh, medical care, but now we actually provide the ambulance also so we can maintain that patient care all the way from the scene to the hospital till we turn them over to the doctors and nurses. Um, means a lot to our personnel to be able to maintain that level of care that we want to provide to them. Um, service is going real well. 
Um, our revenue is, is essentially covering our additional costs. We, um, we're seeing improvement in our customer service and you know we get very high scores on customer service but the, it's, it's that personal touch that we provide to them that really makes the difference to, to our citizens. I think that's you know from my experience I know the city uh, takes a lot of pride in, in how we deliver service and and we like to have full control over that and I think that decision uh, that example of the fire and the uh, EMS service uh, is a great example of us uh, delivering the really best practice care and now you know looked at as a model you know for other agency I think it's really important one thing people don't realize is all of our firefighters are also paramedics or advanced DMTs so all the fire trucks and the ambulances it's the same people they move back and forth between the vehicles well, I know things have changed a lot probably since you started your career in the fire department <laughs> uh, I know that on the law enforcement side uh, one of the biggest changes has been technology and how we leverage technology today to help us do our job better and I know that there's some some recent changes and enhancements in uh, the way you guys do your job and maybe how also may have, may help you know in your response times and whatnot you talk a little bit about uh, I know there's a program called locution yes um, technology has, we've really been able to capture it and utilize it to basically provide better service um, all of our vehicles have Wi-Fi in them um, we have mobile data terms in the trucks just like you all in the fire or the police cars um, but locution is our station alerting system the new one that we went to recently and the nice thing about it that's how dispatch lets the fire stations know to make calls and now the new system allows them to actually go in and enter this information while they're on the phone with the with the citizen or the caller and send us on our way before they're even finished with the call so it, it processes a lot quicker um, we're seeing a, a good turnaround and improvement in our response times overall with that. Well, I think that ultimately that, that results in uh, a better response and care mm -hmm. for the, uh, the citizens and I know that uh, when people call 911 or have an emergency and they call us uh, sometimes we we may forget that, that the response time the true response time you know begins at that moment I know uh, using technology to help roll out your equipment faster is certainly important because on those medical calls you know time certainly is, is a, a, a very very important and it, it, to people it seems like it takes so long but you know it's under six minutes and but it's uh, you know getting the trucks there and everything we're, we're seeing about an eight percent improvement already in the response times and I know there's been some uh, acquisition of new equipment I know as our city grows uh, literally uh, taller in some <laughs> places as things develop uh, I know that takes on uh, different uh, responsibilities I know there's a new piece of equipment uh, a truck did you want to mention that? sure um, we actually are replacing one it's this is a 100 foot aerial platform fire truck it's the one that has basically the bucket on the front of it um, it's really great for even the large homes out here in Germantown being able to put firefighters up on top of them um, gives you a really advanced capability if you get a, a, a large working fire um, it also serves as our rescue company that's fantastic I know that uh, I feel like I could speak for both of our agencies as far as public safety in Germantown. Uh, we take a lot of pride in what we do. I know that you guys in the fire department uh, do as well. And uh, uh, just thank you for the way that you lead the department and the dedication to service that you've had out here for many years. And, and most of all, thank you for coming on and, and sharing with our viewers today. Thank you very much. We have to take another short break. In our last segment, Communications Center Manager Don Taylor will tell us about the Germantown Public Safety Dispatch Center. Back in a bit. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are.
You are watching Germantown Municipal Television, your source for everything Germantown. The Germantown Public Safety Communications Center serves as a central call taking point for all emergency and non-emergency calls for service related to police, fire, and EMS. Last year, the center received over 45,000 calls for service. In the event a citizen in Germantown has a public safety need, the first points of contact are the men and women in our dispatch center. I'm excited to have Captain Don Taylor, the Communications Center Manager, joining us today. Captain Taylor, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, I need to congratulate you and this is a new assignment for you in the oversight of our Communications Center, so congratulations on that. Thank you. And I would just like to have you educate our, our viewers a little bit about uh, what our communication center does and, and what kind of service it provides to, to our citizens. Well, basically, um, we have uh, 21 dispatchers, um, seven per shift. Uh, we dispatch for the police department, uh, we dispatch for the fire department, and we dispatch EMS. Um, we consider police and fire our partners in service for the city. Um, we try to teach leadership with our dispatchers, whether they're supervisors or dispatchers, we teach leadership and you basically have to have a passion for this job because you're on the phone with people in the time of an emergency, they don't understand there's certain things that we have to ask, certain things that we need for the responding officers or the responding EMS and we still, we have to fight through that to get what we need but still provide uh, services and compassion. Yeah. I think it's very important. Uh, I know that uh, we wouldn't want for anyone to have a need to call us, but there are times when people do have some kind of concern or a, or a need for a response from police, fire, or medical. Uh, when someone calls into the center, whether it be 911 or on the non-emergency line, you know, what, what are the kind of things that, that, that you and your staff need from, from our callers? Well, if it's a 911 call, um, most people think that we know their location. If it's from their house, we may have the, the, uh, the location uh, on our positron, but we verify it. The first thing we're going to ask you is, what's your location? Where are you? Uh, the next question will be, um, can you ver verify the phone number you're calling me from? And then we'll get to the emergency. Because we can't find you, we can't help you. Um, when you call from um, a cell phone, uh, the first thing you want to do is you know, check out your surroundings. If, if there's no address to be given, you look for trees, look for buildings, look for some marker that you can tell us that, hey, look, there's a street over here with this and there's a, a building over here with that. And sometimes that's all we have to go on to locate someone. Um, if you're just calling on the non-emergency line, um, we ask that people use the number one system for emergencies or life-threatening emergencies. Uh, if you're calling regarding a barking dog or um, your, your, your lights are out or something to that effect, we would ask you to call on the non-emergency lines. Um, we're still here to provide a service, whether it's 911 or just your lights being out. Um, and, and that's what we try to provide when uh, people call. I know that uh, our communication center is not necessarily unique, and we have a relationship with Shelby County 911 that provides uh, a lot of equipment and training for us. Um, talk about that relationship a little bit with Shelby County 911 as the kind of the oversight body for public service communication centers. Shelby County 911, they provide uh, a lot of the training that we do uh, here in Shelby County. Uh, we do leadership training, we do uh, 911 training, um, we do a lot of in-house training that's um, taught by the people that uh, are supervisors mostly, but if we're going outside of the agency to APCO, NINA, um, ENP training, CMCP training, uh, Shelby County will sponsor that and that's a burden uh, that the police department doesn't have to bear. I know you've been working for a long time in this uh, profession yes. and with our department and uh, in your time uh, down there, what, what are some of the things that have changed? Uh, well, I've been with the department 28 years and as I said before, we dispatch police, fire, EMS and uh, one of the biggest changes um, with dispatch, I can remember when uh, as far as the fire department is concerned, we had the old ring down where you picked up the phone and the fire stations would answer on another line and they would determine who's going to go. Um, and now we've progressed into, um, as Chief said earlier, locution, which has allowed us to dispatch calls uh, quicker. Uh, we have a 24 second uh, response, or our response time in dispatching is 24 seconds faster. 
uh, because we're able to um, allow the locution to dispatch the call while we continue to get information. And uh, what the public uh, misconception is, is when we're getting information that the firemen or EMS hadn't been dispatched, but they have been. But we continually gather information for the responders, whether it's police or fire. You know, going back to, to cell phone calls, I know that cell phone technology can be somewhat unpredictable. And uh, I know there are times where someone that may actually be in our city, but their, their phone call, just depending on tower locations and how busy a tower may be, their phone call may actually end up in another jurisdiction. Can you talk about how you guys handle that? Well, what we do, if, it, if it's coming from another jurisdiction to us, we try to get the location. If we determine where the call is uh, originating from, we'll transfer them to that agency. Um, if it's another agency transferring a call to us, and if it, the tower is busy, it's going to go to the closest tower that's not busy. So if you're right on the border of Germantown and Memphis or Germantown and Carrieville, you may get Carrieville when you're actually in Germantown. Um, but we try to pinpoint where you are by the questions that we ask. Yeah, I guess that goes back for the callers, you know, with everyone using cell phones uh, predominantly, just, you know, the, one of the key pieces of information we, we need to know is where are you? Where are you? Exactly. Okay. And, and like I said, we go from there. Um, it's where are you, the number you're calling from, and what's your emergency? Yeah. And I'm assuming we want most people to stay on the line, especially if we're going to have to transfer. We want yes. them to stay on the line. And we, we, if we have to put them on hold, which we very rarely do, we ask them not to hang up. If it's a life-threatening emergency, such as a cardiac arrest, a heart attack, uh, we may have to do something else or contact another agency, but we do ask you to stay on the line while we do this. And we also try to gather the information just in case we're disconnected, we can give the information to the other agency. Well, I know it's very good for people to put a face and hear from someone in the communication center who uh, normally are only contacted by phone and uh, very important a uh, critical part of our operation as a uh, police department and public safety. So thank you for coming today. Thank you for sharing with our viewers. And uh, congr again, congratulations on your new assignment. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's all the time we have on this edition of On the Beat. Stay tuned to us throughout this year as we spotlight public safety programs and partnerships and bring you interviews with the people who strive to make Germantown a safe place to live, work, and play. If you'd like more information on this show, or any other show on Germantown Municipal Television, please visit www.gmtvonline.org. If you have questions about policing in Germantown or topics you would like for us to discuss, feel free to send those by email to my attention at rbright at germantown-tn.gov. We'll see you when On the Beat returns next month.